While for a more in-depth look at the UK election results, I spoke with John Struthers, an economics professor at the University of the West of Scotland in Glasgow. I asked him for his reaction to the outcome of the vote. My own reaction is one of shock. Uh, of course, you have to remember that this, is a, this was an unnecessary election. It was called by the UK Prime Minister, Theresa May, to increase her mandate uh, ahead of the Brexit talks, which are about to start in about 10, ten days. And, uh, you know, the way the results are unfolding, well, have unfolded today because all the results are in now, uh, they were hoping for a, a bigger majority than they had before, and they, they don't have a majority now. I mean, I would even describe it as a self-inflicted wound. Now, we know that uh, Scotland held a referendum once the UK decided to cast its vote about Brexit and, and did not want uh, to actually leave the European Union. But now the Scottish National Party in this recent snap general election suffered some huge losses, including that of its deputy, Alex Salmond, losing his seat. So what role did this talk of a future referendum with Scotland have on, on some of the losses that we saw? Well, I think it had a major role in the drop in the number of uh, seats that the Scottish Nationalist Party uh, won yesterday. Many, many voters in Scotland voted tactically, uh, i.e. voting for another party to stop the SNP winning quite so many seats. Not only did they lose 21 out of 56 seats in the UK Parliament, even in the seats that they won, their majority was slashed quite significantly. And therefore, if you look at the total number of votes, not just the number of seats that they lost, it was a dramatic drop for, for the SNP. So I'm convinced, and most commentators are convinced, that uh, talk of a second Scottish independence referendum, which was to some extent precipitated by the Brexit vote, because as you said, Scotland and Northern Ireland voted to stay in the EU. And uh, many people, I think, in voting yesterday were voting tactically to send a message to the Scottish National Party that they don't want a second Scottish referendum. And what were some of the other economic issues especially that could have contributed to the way people voted in Scotland? Well, since the referendum on Scottish independence in 2014, the economic case for Scottish independence has weakened. It was weak in 2014, but it's become even weaker now with the fall in the oil price from about more than $140 a barrel uh, around about 2013 to now about $50 at best. And we have to remember that for, for independent Scotland, oil revenues would represent a significant proportion of their income. Some estimates suggest it would be anything between 15 and 18 percent. And so oil revenues have collapsed more or less. So the economic case for independence, I think, also played a part a significant part in the decline in the, in the votes for, for SNP in yesterday's election. Now, Theresa May is saying that she's going to form a coalition government with the Democratic Unionists in order to create certainty in the UK. And obviously, all this is happening just days before Brexit negotiations are due to start. What are your thoughts on the sort of bargaining position now that the UK is in? Well, the bargaining position that the UK will be in is going to be weaker uh, in respect to Brexit, Brexit uh, discussions, which are, as you say, are about to start in about 10 days. We have to bear in mind that the United Kingdom has to be in negotiations against 27 other e European countries who have, all have stakes. And as I said before, the reason for calling this election was to strengthen Theresa May's hand in those negotiations. Now, the only way that she can, uh, the, the Conservative government can at least uh, carry its voice in the UK Parliament is, as you said, with the Democratic Unionist Party of, of Northern Ireland. And, of course, Northern Ireland, as a country, voted to stay in the EU, therefore adding to the complexity of, of the situation. So the result yesterday, or, or today, as it's unfolding, uh, will really complicate an already complex set of negotiations that United Kingdom will have to undertake uh, within, within the Brexit discussions that uh, uh, are about to commence. So with Scotland being part of this Brexit that they clearly did not want, and now voting and seeing that the SNP is, is losing some of, its, uh, some of its seats, where does Scotland go from here? Well, uh, if I knew the answer to that question, I, I think I would be a very rich man. <laughs> it, it's just adding uncertainty onto uncertainty, to be quite honest with you, because 
The other dimension to keep in mind, Rachel, is that we have a parliament in Scotland, uh, and the SNP still has a big, uh, has a majority there, and that that parliament recently voted in favour of a second Scottish referendum. But there is no doubt whatsoever that yesterday's election results is a, are, are a major blow to the position of the Scottish National Party and the future of, of uh, the independence movement in, in Scotland. Uh, of course, politics, like economics, goes in cycles, and it's possible that there could be a bounce back uh, in, in, in the next four, four years or so when the next elections occur. But I would say for the meantime, uh, until the Brexit deal is sorted out at the very minimum, Scottish independence is off the agenda.